To gently land a rocket ship on the surface of Mars, one must break the most ornery physics. When a spacecraft returns to Earth, the relatively thick atmosphere helps slow down the speeding bullet. But on Mars, the aerodynamics are not so friendly. The atmosphere is much thinner, with the densest Martian air only about as thick as what you'll find on Earth at 100,000 feet above sea level, more than three times the altitude of Mount Everest Peak. Of over 40 missions sent to Mars, fewer than half have been successful, according to NASA. And now Elon Musk wants to send people there? I call it the anti-Goldilocks atmosphere, says Jim Reuter, NASA Associate Administrator for the Space Technology Mission Directorate. It's thick enough that it causes you problems and not thin enough to help you. So the Starship won't ever reach Mars intact? What about 100 crew missions? Frankly, even Musk doesn't have the right answer for this, but this trouble is the reason why Elon Musk and SpaceX are working hard day by day to have the most advanced Starship heat shields. SpaceX Starship's heat shield new design is more important than you think. So let's find out everything about it today, episode of Alpha Tech Channel. SpaceX has been building, testing, and refining the Starship's heat shield technology for more than three years. In March 2019, Musk shared a video of the hex tiles undergoing heat test. SpaceX's custom-built ceramic tiles made their first public appearances in July and August 2019, first launching into orbit on a Cargo Dragon spacecraft, later tagging along on Starhopper's spectacular 150-meter or about 500-foot hop a few weeks later. The Dragon went on to re-enter and splash down in the Pacific Ocean without an issue a month later, effectively marking the first successful orbital re-entry of part of a Starship heat shield. With Starship SN8 heralding the arrival of full-size prototype flight tests in the last few months of 2020, SpaceX began to substantially increase the number of tiles installed on Starships, jumping from a handful to hundreds within a few months. SN8 was fitted with 11 tiles. SN9 had 73 tiles. SN10, 246 tiles. And SN11, 384 tiles. By SN15, that number had increased to about 829 tiles. And a big thanks to Tyler Gray for this statistic. Although Starship's SN15's successful May 5, 2021 launch and landing means it will never fly, Starship SN16 was outfitted with more than a thousand tiles. So far, Ship 20 is the first and only Starship prototype to receive a full heat shield with over 10,000 tiles. Unfortunately, the SN20 is no longer the ship that will make the maiden orbital flight of Starship. Known as the replacement for S20's role, S24 is currently nearly 100% complete heat shielded and expected to complete with roughly 25,000 thermal protection tiles needed to cover the entire windward side of the world's largest rocket upper stage. On the 19th of July, Starship Gazer took pictures of Starship 24 windward and leeward sides. Close inspection reveals that the tile is laying now much more even than it was previously. The tiles are designed to cover the side facing the Earth as the massive vehicle makes its descent belly first. Hexagonal tiles on most of windward side, no shield needed on leeward side, must clarified in 2019. A transpiration cooling system, meanwhile, will make sure Starship will be ready to fly again immediately after landing, according to Musk. Wonderfully, the effectiveness of the new Starship heat shield design is finally being demonstrated. The first orbital Starship prototype S24 is currently in a series of important ground tests. Remember two months ago with the cryo test of Ship 24, a big pop noise happened on the latest prototype and many of the tiles flew off and hit the ground. Last year, with the vent of Ship 20's header tank, many tiles on Ship 20 also fell. The tiles and attachment systems seem prone to cracking and falling off, which won't work if Starship 24 and future Starships are to survive re-entry. But SpaceX definitely figured out how to reliably produce more robust thermal tiles and mount them. A slight color variation in the tiles is due to SpaceX experimenting with production. Recently, Ship 24 just completed two spin prime tests of all its six Raptor engines with no fire. More importantly, no heat shield fails. 
This is a big success and congratulations to the SpaceX team. And yet SpaceX is even developing very well Raptor engine shielding and the heat shield for orbital launch mount. This shielding must have been purely thermal. The thin metal doesn't seem to be designed to shield against re-entry wind load. These prerequisites must also be met for a rocket to launch into space. You know, only the rocket is not enough for a flight. Regardless, launching them on suborbital test flights still subjects heat shield installations to major thermal and mechanical stresses similar to or worse than what Starship would need to withstand during launch after re-entry. Unlike the Space Shuttle, which also relied almost exclusively on catastrophically fragile ceramic heat shield tiles, Starship's tiles are mounted directly to its hull and that hull is made out of steel instead of an aluminum frame. In theory, Starship's structure can thus withstand and remain functional at temperatures approaching 1500 degrees Fahrenheit, whereas the shuttle's heat shield had to keep the vehicle's aluminum structure below 360 degrees Fahrenheit. Of course, Starship has yet to even attempt to survive an orbital velocity re-entry with some 10,000 ceramic heat shield tiles mounted directly to its steel skin. If successful, SpaceX's ultra-simple design could give Starship massive advantages over the shuttle, which ultimately proved to be a more dangerous than traditional crew capsule and about as expensive as a similarly capable expendable rocket. But Starship's heat shield has its work cut out to prove to be the vast spacecraft that's truly up to the challenge of orbital re-entry and safe, reliable reuse. Current state-of-the-art thermal protection systems, or TPSs, typically require significant maintenance between flights. Anyway, only an orbit flight can give more data for this. After all, Starship's TPS is intended to provide a dramatic leap forward by demonstrating operational reuse, requiring minimal to no maintenance between flights. These heat shield tiles are of course necessary for the ship to survive the extreme heat of re-entry at speeds of around five miles per second. Elon Musk said the shield is made of aluminum, lithium, and carbon fiber, and they have a low max temperature allowable. This is a prerequisite for the shield to be able to do its job. SpaceX does all this because starships land on a planet with an atmosphere depending on air resistance rather than rocket power to slow them down. This essentially creates a shock wave in front, which forms this superheated plasma, which can be highly destructive to the structure of an unprotected or faulty spacecraft. Fortunately, the plasma is mostly flowing around the vehicle and not immediately hitting this. That's great, but the problem is that the convective heat transfer between the shock wave and the vehicle surface is still incredibly hot. That's why the Starship has heat shield tiles. SpaceX has learned from NASA's experience with the space shuttle. The Starship tiles will be thinner, less brittle, and allow some heat to be radiated away on the far side of the Starship. SpaceX also has a goal of landing on Mars in the future, so the installation of these radiator tiles is a necessary condition. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Don't forget to share your ideas in the comments section. Everyone's support is motivation for us to create more quality content. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.